modelling of the skirt block. So this demonstration will indicate to you how to model the skirt block with reference to the Silberberg video which you can get from the library for guidance. <coughs> okay, to begin modelling the block you'll start with a piece of calico that's 60 by 60 centimetres square and on it you'll mark the grain line which runs in line with the warp threads of the fabric <coughs> and will also be parallel to the selvage and you will also mark the hip line which in this instance follows also the weft line and you'll begin modelling at the point where these two lines intersect. To model onto this form you'll find the point where the hip line hits this centre front stitch line and the point where on your fabric the grain line meets the weft or hip line you'll match these two up at that point. You'll then need to begin to pin the fabric onto the form. So starting with the grain line in line with the centre front, you'll pin the fabric to the form by hooking the pin through and lifting it back to give you the piece attached to the form itself. When you're pinning this through, it's important that you insert the pin into the fabric in the form and pick back and then you can use your fingernail to push in and that way you can get the pin to go into the fabric. In this instance because of the shape of the form and the fact it curves back for the crotch point it's important that you don't continue to pin down to this level but leave it so that at the point where the fabric hangs straight from the form that's where you finish pinning so that it follows the form correctly but also gives you the right shape. You will then need to smooth the fabric round and make sure it's following the hip line around the body in line with the hip line marked on the fabric <coughs> but also so it doesn't sit very tight to the body it sits just slightly off the body itself. So using the flat of your hand you can smooth the fabric round so it sits in line with this, but you can see it sort of floats on top of the form itself and sits slightly away from it. You'll then, with the pins, continue to pin the fabric around the hip line so it's held at that level all the way around. And again, you're not pulling it tight, you're allowing it to sit slightly away from the form using the flat of your hand. And make sure your pins are straight. Okay, so again, you're picking into the fabric and then lifting back out again. In this instance, because there's a crease following the buttocks of this form, you're going to let the fabric bridge these two concavities so that it gives you the right type of shape for it to hold and flow down from the buttocks. Once you have the fabric pinned successfully to the form around the hip line, you can begin to model the shape to allow you to form the suppression into this piece. So the next thing that we're going to do with this, once you've pinned around the hip, is you're going to smooth it to follow the centre back and we're going to pin this in as well to hold it and this by holding it at the centre back and centre front will allow us to place the suppression at the back, the front and the side. So again you're going to take your pins because of the concavity in this particular form you're not going to start pinning until after this goes which is about in line with the top hip line marked on here. So again you're going to insert the pin into the fabric, pick it back, use your fingernail to get you some depth and just push the pin through. You do the same and pin it up to the waist level at this point, so it's held firmly and won't move. Okay, once, you've this held, or once this is held firmly at the centre back, you can now work on creating the shaping for the side seam and distributing the suppression between the front and back darts and also the side seam. So just by taking your hands and lightly brushing up here, you can see your form creases at the side seam and on the back 
and again you can see the start of a forming crease on the front there and this is where your suppression is going to be so just running your hands up on top of the fabric you can see it creates these nice um, areas of suppression here in line with the side seam you just run your fingers up on those and once you've pinched them in you can start to pin from the base here going up to the waist to hold the suppression in at your side seam if at all at any point it comes away you can just smooth up with your hands bring them into this position here what is important is that you look at this side seam that divides the bodice and try and ensure that the suppression that you have follows this line so again you can roll the fabric between finger and thumb just to move it slightly to keep the alignment in the correct place with the front and back divisions of the bodice and again if you lose it at any point you can just smooth it back in with the back of your hands and you need to pin this up to the waist level and at that point you can leave it so now you have your form with the skirt block pinned on with the suppression correctly placed in the side seam to give you that shaping and you can see it begins to come from the hip and follows up with the curve of the mannequin. So the next stage of forming the skirt block is going to be positioning the dart on the front. We've already put the suppression into the side which is the dart to take us over the hip shaping here. The next stage is going to be to create the dart on the front of this piece. So again taking your hands you're just going to smooth up either side of where the suppression is most likely to occur and you can see you start to form the shape of a dart here. Again just using your hands to smooth the piece up and then using your finger and thumb just to smooth down you can see the dart shape appears where it wants to naturally be within the fabric and you can pin that. On this form because it more closely resembles a human body there is quite a small dart on this front here that you may get a more pronounced dart with a different shaped form or equally again if you were modelling onto the figure you may get a more pronounced dart. So again you're pinning up here to the top at the waist point just to hold that dart in position and now you have the suppression correctly placed in the front and at the side seam. So the next step will be to place the same suppression into the back. Now it is possible to smooth this up into one large dart if that's what you desire, however that might not be appropriate for later manipulations of the pattern you tend to get a better shape distributing this dart into two. So you can either put it into one large dart and then run your thumb up the middle of it to move it into two smaller darts or again you can use your hands to smooth up and manipulate it so you find two darts forming. And these replicate the shape that occurs between the back and the buttocks protrusion. So again, once you form those darts, you can take your pins and you can pin in to hold these darts into position. And they need to be pinned all the way up to the waist level. Similarly, you can now smooth your hands back in and find this dart that sits at the side and pin that in as well. Remember you're not making this fabric hug to the form so it's very tight, you're putting it to the form a slight amount of room between it and the dimensions of the form. And again, you're going to pin this dart up to the waist level. At this point, you may want to assess the suppression and ensure that it's correct between each of the darts. And you may then want to manipulate it slightly to give you a better shape and put the darts into a better position. In this instance, we're going to go with what we have. So now we have the fabric pinned to the form to replicate the block that you want we need to now mark certain key points on it so that when we remove it we remember where it aligns. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a line down the centre back in line with the stitch line on the form and you can use your finger to trace that line down if you can't see it visually through the fabric to ensure that you have that centre line marked. When you get to this point where it bridges the concavities you will have to then work out where the centre is and continue this line down 
so it falls to the centre. And this is going to be the centre back line. Okay, so you have this line at this point. Now what you're going to do is cut down the fabric from the top here to the waistline. Make sure again that you don't cut into the tape. So you'll just need to cut the fabric down to the waistline itself all the way around. And this just eases up any tension around there and allows it to sit closely to the form. And you'll see how it now is allowed to pull back in to echo the contours of the form itself. Once you've done this, you can then take your pen and mark the waistline running round in the centre of the tape. So you have that as an indication of where the waist will fall. Again, you can use your fingers to feel the top and bottom of the tape and to then locate its centre. And you'll continue to mark this all the way round from the centre front all the way round to the centre back. So you have that record where the waist falls on this mannequin transferred to your skirt block. And the final thing you're going to mark onto this is the position of each dart. So you'll take it, fold the piece down, look at where the fabric overlaps and make your pen mark or pencil mark running down to the base of the dart itself on both sides. You can run these lines all the way down to mark in the darts. So the two back darts are marked in, and then the side seam suppression is marked in. All the way down to close to the hip line, and the same, fold the dart the other way, feel where the overlap is, and mark down there so you get the right shape back and front. Turn it around, and then just mark in your front dart. Once you've marked all your darts in, you can then remove the pins and remove the fabric for the form and then you will have the shape, the initial outline for your block. A replication of the mannequin itself transferred to a block which you can use as the foundation for your pattern. You will have to do some further modification to it to ensure the lines are smooth, the darts meet correctly, but you can do that quite simply using a set square and if necessary a curve. You have a centre back line here which will follow the centre back of the body, a centre front line which is the same as you've used as the grain line marked on this and that grain line will need to be replicated through it. You have a hip line which follows the weft direction of the fabric, you have the suppression that occurs at the side seam, you have the suppression that occurs in the front dart which will fall over the protrusion of the abdomen of the form and equally again you can see you don't have a dart lower than this so if you're to lower the waistline you can see you'll either shorten the dart or remove it entirely and then you have darts at the back that follow around the protrusion that occurs between the buttocks and the waist shaping itself and this has been distributed into two darts which you can use to form a better shape and remove any opportunities for points to form in the fabric. <laughs>